we're compositing this into a scene with some different geometry. Um, and the man needed to fall onto the geometry, or maybe it's curved, so it'll kind of all bunch up in the middle of the geometry sort of thing. Um, then you can create a piece of geometry um, and have it interact with the particles just by simply going to Enmesh Create Passive Collider. And that will allow the particles um, to interact with that mesh object. But in this case, we just need a simple ground plane. All right, so what we're going to do now is just close that down, and we're going to create a cache. Um, now, a cache, pretty much, it'll do the whole simulation, save it to disk, so that you can scrub through the timeline, you won't have to re-simulate or anything, it's all set in stone. But if you want to change the simulation, you just simply delete the cache, change the settings, and recache. Um, it speeds up playback a hell of a lot because you're not re-simulating every time that you hit the play button. So first things first, we're going to set our playback time range to about 120. Um, you can shorten it because from my tests, the man's fully formed into a puddle at around 60 or 70 um, with it all settled, but just having that extra time I guess, lets you see what happened for longer. Um, so to create our cache, we're just going to go end cache, create new cache, just open up the options box just in case. Um, that's everything there's default, you can change the name if you want, but I don't really see a point. Um, just make sure your cache time range is time slider, or you can set uh, start to end if you only wanted to simulate up to the 70 frames um, but then I'd recommend shortening your playback time because otherwise after that 70 frames it's going to try and simulate from there onwards um, so we're just going to do it for the whole 1 to 120 range so just hit create uh, I'm just going to hit replace existing because I've already made a cache using um, this seen before. Actually, no, we'll just go cancel. Um, we're going to save the scene first, just in case there are any problems. So I'm just going to save it over this one as shot one. So just hit save. I'm going to replace it. And now just do the end cache. And you can just hit create new cache because we know the settings are all there. Um, so now it's going through and simulating every frame. Um, this may take a while depending on your system. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes on mine um, so I'm just going to pause the video and come back when it's finished simulating alright the simulation's finished but I had some problems with my cache um, whenever I rewound it would pretty much destroy it um, so all I did is close down my restart my computer and create a new scene and pretty much do every step again that we've done in the tutorial and it works fine so I'm not sure if it's a bug with 2009 or and particles or whether it was just my computer but if you encounter similar problems just I guess try and start over all right so everything's been simulated now if we do a quick render you'll see that it doesn't look like liquid um, it's only rendering the particles so what we have to do is we have to convert the end particles into polygons which is similar to, um, I guess, blobbies in 3D's Max or um, meshing a particle simulation in RealFlow. All right, so we'll just close this out. Make sure you save the scene so you hit Control S and have your end particles selected. Go Modify, Convert, and particles to polygons. Click that. I'll just let it do its thing and we'll soon see a mesh which is our poly surface one so we'll select our end particles control H to hide them and there's our surface, turn x-ray off and I mean it doesn't look very good right now but that's your basis so if we render that out 
looking a bit more like liquid metal than it was before, but it's still not perfect. So click on our polysurface one, open up the attribute editor with control A. So we'll just scroll down to our output mesh and open that up. And we'll just play around with some of these. Um, I'm going to be using settings that I found worked well in my tests. Of course, you can play around and change it to what you think looks best, but I'm just going with what I know. So I'm going to change our mesh method from cubes to quads. And that's updated back there, so we'll just make another quick render. And it makes it really jittery, but after playing around with the settings, it actually makes it look quite good. So first, next thing, we'll change our mesh smoothing iterations to three. And you can see in the background there that it's gone a bit smoother. So our render looks a lot better now. Uh, we'll change our mesh triangle size to 0.25 and do another quick render. It's looking better but now it's gone a bit lumpy so we'll change our blobby radius scale to 0.9 uh, that's looking better, but we still have some stray polys here that are still uh, attached to each other. So we'll change our threshold to 0 0.01. There we go. Alright, now just do another render. And that's looking a lot better. It's pretty much the final thing. <laughs> Um, all we have to really do now is set up materials and do the render, but uh, we'll just close the attribute editor, close the outliner, and control S to save the scene. Alright, so we'll just close that down. So now we're going to set up a material for our object. So if we just right click and hold it down and go assign new material. Um, is it? Me Material X. It's a special mental ray material, so it only works in mental ray. Um, just go to your Me Material X2 node, or it might say X1 on your computer. Um, go Presets, Chrome, Replace. And now if we just do a render out. can barely see anything because it's reflecting the environment that it's in and the environment is black but it also has these specular highlights which creates that bright white look so we have to set up an environment for it so if we open up our render settings uh, under indirect lighting hit image based lighting create image name open and that's where we're gonna select our reflection image from the resources folder. Hit open, close. Now we'll do a render. And now you can see that it's reflecting the environment. Um, I have some different settings in my render that I'll show you so that you can put it in yours. Um, under quality I've changed my anti-aliasing quality to a max sample level of 2 and the filter to Mitchell. This will just give some more crisp lines around the edge of our model. And also under ray tracing I've changed my reflections to 3 which if we store that and drop it back to its default of 1 and do another render you'll see the difference. So just using the default reflections level of 1, you get these black edges because it's not reflecting the reflection. Um, but when you increase it to 3, all that goes away. Now like I said earlier, you can use a different um, environment.